Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's Nick Baldwin. Welcome back to another episode of Command Your Social. I have my co-hosts with me, Leslie and Jesse, as usual. What is going on, guys? Hi, hi. Hi, so happy to be here. Just sitting over here, you know, with more followers than you. And I love you. <laughs> okay, so just so you know, Jesse, <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> when you wave, when you wave on a podcast, no one can see you. Oh, um, okay. yeah. Hot tip. Jesse has 50, 75,000 TikTok followers now to my 248. Actually, wait, hold on. Not 248,000, by the way. Right. 248. I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Um, but today we have uh, two guests. We have Carissa Zimmer and her husband. Um, oh, Trent Zimmer. See how, see? <laughs> we know I'm not that important. Who is Nick, running this show? Let's not favor. The Zimmers. Uh, are here. They're a KW team. Their production last year was around 32 million with 80 s- units, give or take, which is pretty Woo-hoo! awesome. So amazing. And welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Happy to be here. Oh, awesome. Husband can talk too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> well, you did say before we went live that Carissa was your gatekeeper. So I don't know if we can talk directly to you or not. <laughs> No, everything must go through her before you go. <laughs> okay. I'll be like, so Trent, tell me about it. And she'll be like, Nick just asked if I heard him. <laughs> um, so thanks for being here. You guys have some fun social media strategies. Uh, you're doing Facebook stories quite often. Trent, you're doing really cool videos about local establishments. One of them, uh, the best burger in town. You guys are from Minnesota. So let's let's get that out of the way, too. Um, so tell us a little bit about like, what's your social media platform of choice right now? Uh, platform of choice. Yeah. I I think this year I'm really focusing on YouTube. So it's just something where it's a weakness and Carissa is, Carissa is just so good with relating to people on Instagram and Facebook that I've kind of like not gotten off of there. I still post on there, but she absolutely crushes it on there with just engagement. She just, every time she goes on and talks, it's so crystal clear and people respond to it. And I'm more like the things that I post are usually funny (laughs) or stupid. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to say that your YouTube videos, you've been influenced by Ken Posick Yeah. and Ken Posick. We've had him on the podcast before and he's down in Orlando doing some cool things with video. And you recently did a fun video where you, the things that you're doing are the things that really get good Google juice. Like you did a video recently where you evaluated how many hamburgers in your area. Like it was just two, two burgers. It was just two, but that's because these two people are the ones who claim the best in the original. So we, we compared those two and and what? it's not just a cheeseburger. It's a juicy, it's a Lucy. juicy Lucy. It's, yeah, it's an experience. Jesse, what were you going to say? I just, I just need to address the elephant in the room. I'm sorry. Did you say Google juice? Thank yes, you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Google juice is a thing. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm with I don't Jesse. like it. With we Jesse. won't say that word anymore. <laughs> anymore. Okay. SEO, <laughs> as they say in the no. So you did a video where they can, where you compared the two uh, juicy Lucy's. Okay, but see, now we're saying Juicy Lucy. Google Juicy Lucy. Google Juicy <laughs> Lucy's. So one place and another place make the same burger. Who makes it better? Matt's Bar. And that was the video I did. And so that, that was the final decision. It was Matt's Bar. Who it was, did it it was Matt's Bar. It's, it's yeah. So You'll tell get me to about- experience it. Nick, you're going to be here in June, and I'm taking you there. We're going to do our own little mini taste. I'm excited about that. Tell me about how the reception was to that video. Did people give you some good feedback on it? Yeah, not only did we have a ton of engagement leading up to it, because people are just, it, when you're here, like everyone in Minnesota knows about those two places. So when I posted that we were going to be doing it, everyone wanted to know. Like it's been on Food Network. It's been on a bunch of different TV channels. And they never reveal who they picked, right? Like they'll be like, and my choice is, and then a bus will drive by. Oh, so like they don't want to take sides. The big mystery is like, no one ever announces who the winner is. And so I announced the winner and uh, people just want to see stuff they can relate to. They don't, they don't want to see me walking through a house. They want to see me out in the community doing things that they do. And it's all about just connecting with people. So that's why I'm doing those videos. 
I have a question. So you said, you said before that YouTube was an area that you were lacking, but like, what do you, what do you expect to get out of it? Like, what do you, what kind of business do you hope to get out of it? What's the, what's the result you're going for right now? That's a good question. I don't know that I necessarily have laid down like a goal other than I want to remain consistent. One of the things that, uh, you know, Nick mentioned my inspiration is Ken. I think Ken does just such an amazing job of, of not selling you. He just so relatable. So valuable. So valuable. Yeah. It's just, it's just comes from, from contribution all the time. And one of the things he said on an interview uh, that I was listening to was that his, uh, Nick, I know you love this video, his 10 things you didn't know about Celebration Florida video. Oh, yeah, it's a good video. Which was like very shoot from the hip. I mean, he was iPhone on a gimbal. That video is now, what, five, six years old? And people are still going back and watching it and contacting him from it. And so the reason I love YouTube more than some of these other platforms is because these videos, they live forever. Mm-hmm. And people are always going to want to know who has the best ju- juicy Lucy. It's not going to be a, a 60 second reel that disappears into cyberspace a month from today. Yeah. It's and the gonna, Google juice on that is huge. The, it's, the, <laughs> it's, it creates some really moist Google juice. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh no. my God. That's the worst. <laughs> that's dude. what I thought, Trent. <laughs> the worst. Oh Trent, I, was thinking. Just took it to another I love one. it. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's so there with good. Moist. I didn't want to say, I didn't, I was thinking that word and I didn't want to say it. So <laughs> leave it to Trent. Um, so that's awesome. So uh, tell us about the creative process. If there is any Trent. <laughs> the, 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 so you want to know how the creative process. No, no, to- no. What I want to know is tell us about how like you came up. Okay. Listen, what am I going to do? That isn't me walking through houses, but that is something that people like about this area that might get some traction. We have a, uh, one of the tools that we use is Slack and we have a Slack channel that's called content day. And what we've done is we've dedicated every other Friday to content day where Carissa and I, we basically use it as a date day. Her and I go around with the camera and yeah, it's, it's really awesome. We get away, we get away and we get to do fun stuff. But what we do is we just brain dump into that content day channel. And we've gone really, we've gone, okay, let's like stop thinking about what we think would be fun because we take things for granted. So something as simple as like the local park with a waterfall at it, like we're probably going to do a video on that. And there's, we have tons of lakes, right? The land of 10,000 lakes. So maybe we'll go go visit a lake that has a bar on it that people might like. Or So we're just trying to go really simple with things that people enjoy and making like five to 10 minute videos out of them. So what I'm getting from this is the criteria is that it has to be a bar. <laughs> no. <laughs> we did have an idea on Cinco de Mayo to go around and see who has the best margarita. And then we quickly discovered that we can't do that because we would need a driver. <laughs> oh, gotcha. and realistically i can't have more than like two margaritas so i'm like this is sense. gonna have to be like a multi-day shoot <laughs> so tell us about who's filming these videos that'd be carissa for now and and how are you filming them we use a gopro 10 it's oh so the reason we like it and we use iphone as well um with just a road wireless go mic it's a super easy attachment uh, but the reason we like GoPro is because she can just like throw it in her purse mm-hmm. and it actually is pretty capable other than uh, in really, really low light. So on a dark, dimly bit, dimly lit bar, Nick. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, it does. It does really well. And so that's what we're using now until we upgrade. We just did a video um, at Como Zoo, which is uh, one of the two zoos that people visit is there a bar there? here. And um, it was just like the, the monkey place was super dark. So that got challenging, but um, we try to film things like by the entrance or by a window or something to gather some natural light. One of the things we're working on and we're talking about this right now is how do we leverage out who's behind the camera so that she can join me because mm-hmm. she's the true talent here. She's better at talking. She's way more attractive. I'm not funny. <laughs> He's funny. Yeah, I, okay. I, yeah. I, she has no sense of humor. And I tell her that all the time, but um, she's, she'll be phenomenal on camera, but 
it, we kind of have to coexist. And so we're working on making that happen. So we've leveraged out the editing, which mm-hmm. is amazing. Oh, you've done yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, so tell, who's tell us about that. Which, well, yeah. our friend, Ken, once again, giving Ken props. Um, I reached out to him and, and said, who did you use when you started to leverage that out? And he, he sent me to a website called, I believe, Upwork.com. Yeah. Okay. So I went to Upwork. I posted the job uh, description and I got probably 15 people who were interested in the, in taking it. And some guy named Eric sent me the most bizarre video. Like it was so weird. I was like, dude, you are the clear winner. This is the weirdest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. And you're exactly what I need. Cause I'm weird. And he, he's just such a character and he does amazing work and it's unique and he can be professional if I need him to be professional and he can be totally off the charts goofball if I need him to do that. And, uh, that's been huge. So the average video, Nick, like the, the cheeseburger one, the juicy Lucy video, um, we took all that footage. I dump it in a drive. Eric gets it. Eric lives in a van and drives around. So Eric edits it from his van. Does he live in a van it. down by the river? Uh, it depends what day of the week. <laughs> yeah. That, it can see, be by a river in the desert. See, but that, see, that's, that's, that's probably something you don't even, that reference is way over. Trans no, I know. Now. Farley, oh, okay. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Remember, I'm just I'm saying, the, I'm the humor this from guy. the 90s, man. You're a baby. <laughs> um, and uh, that video for the Juicy Lucy was, I think, I want to say like $110. Wow. Okay, so let me ask you Doable. this. when you, Because people are going to want to know this. When, Pete, when you send the video to Eric, do you tell him how you want it to look? Or does, uh, how do you get it to him? And how do you explain to him the way you want the editing to look and feel? So I drop uh, the only thing, the only work on my end is I go into all the content and I split it up by B roll and then the story and I'll put the story in chronological so that he kind of understands what the flow should look like. Yeah. Then he sends me a form and it just basically goes, um, do you want this professional fun or a mix of the two? What's the story? Um, is there anything else I should know? And so it's, it's really, really simple. And he's very quick with text. Like he voice texts me all the time. In fact, I'll wake up to a voice text from him that's like, Trent, you're so beautiful. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs> He's unbelievable. I'm Chris sorry, has heard it. I love that guy. guy. I want yeah. Eric. You should see He's the guy. Funny. He's never, he on his Instagram, he never has a shirt on, he never has shoes on. And when I, when I actually went to his oh, Instagram, I when I was like kind of creeping on whether I wanted to hire him or not, one of his videos was... <laughs> Uh, one-on-one naked basketball with his best friend. Oh my God. <laughs> and wow. they're literally out. I want yes, an Eric. Censored. I want an Eric. Censored, but it's like him and his best friend in the backyard playing one-on-one street ball against each other. With and no they're football. naked. Yeah, they're completely naked. <laughs> so this is why. Oh my gosh. I that love sounds it. dangerous. That's interesting. So, <laughs> so about 30 seconds in, and I don't know why I kept watching, but about Yeah, that's a rather in. long time, Trent. No, an hour and 45 it's minutes. like a bad car accident. <laughs> So at <laughs> halftime, I realized <laughs> at halftime, he was down by three, <laughs> but oh uh, no, it was, it was the funniest thing. So, you know, like at the beginning of a basketball game when you like go, okay, check. And you bounce it to the other guy and he goes, throws it back to you. Well, the guy yeah, checks oh, sure, it. I'm a big basketball fish. So now. the guy checks it to him. Yeah. He turns around, bends over and hikes it back to the guy. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what is Eric's Instagram handle immediately? <laughs> Okay, first of That's all, there's only I think it's White movies. Chocolate Thunders is, is his name. <laughs> so what I was going to say is Wait, this was, is why Trent yeah. hires the videographer and I hire the CPA. Yes. Yeah. So that makes sense. That's where my brain is at. <laughs> Leslie, there's what were we going to ask? be one type of ball in the court. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Sorry, so sorry. I this had podcast, to. I had to. I had this to. You podcast like is rated R. We could probably go on for like an hour yeah. with puns. Yeah. So let's move on. Okay. <laughs> so I that's. Have a question. Oh, I go ahead. Have a question. So, getting back to your YouTube channel and things like that, the production of it all, I I think our listeners would probably want to know how are you getting it out to your database. So what does that look like? I know you might be using command. So little tips here and there for our listeners would be awesome. Um, we haven't, I'll probably defer that most of this question to Carissa, but we don't have a clear set process on how we like announce the videos. But I think what we, what we've seen some success with is sort of like making very 
not professional announcements that it's coming. So like a, a story post with just text, Hey, new video coming up on the Como zoo, check it out. It'll be out tomorrow. That way people know about it. Yeah. And it doesn't okay. have to be like this big production. You don't have to make a Canva post to do it. And, and no email blasts. No, we haven't um, been we haven't been doing it yet, but it's on our radar. And well, okay, so maybe she's adding it to newsletters. I think. Yeah, yeah, so it's usually on our newsletter. So our our goal is every other Friday to do a content day, which then gets us from when Eric edits it, I pretty much can count on one new video for the monthly newsletter that we put out. And we have buyer and seller landing pages that we utilize when a client is under contract that we also use command for checklists. I'm getting really granular here, but when you go no, on a buyer or seller landing page on the bottom, there's like a video for each step in the process of when it's under contract. And on the bottom of that landing page, it says, learn more about where you live. And that goes directly to our YouTube channel. And in that series is all of the videos that Trent has conducted. Got so it. If you have a buyer that's like that from out of state, they can click that link and learn about some of the places that are go-tos um, in the Twin Cities. That's, that's cool. cool. I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. That's why she's the brains. <laughs> Amazing. I just Amazing. take all his stuff and then try to, you know, yep. put it into it places. I have counted, uh, I'm sorry, Chris, but Nick, um, I've counted five insults to our guest now, sir. <laughs> no, because uh, Trent and I have that type You're of You're out of control. You're lucky I'm not sensitive. They have that yeah. relationship. Listen, the, the people that come on this podcast, they just they just get made fun of. No, um, <laughs> joking. No, but we, we joke about this off podcast too, um, yes. that my wife and Carissa are very similar in that. Yes they just run things. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's and just censor things like Trent did yeah. a video and he accidentally swore in one of the clips and Eric left it in. And we try to keep our channel very family friendly. Yeah. Um, and those of you with kids may understand this, but our Ezra, our oldest, he'll go on YouTube and just watch like random videos. Of yeah. Random mine too. So now he loves watching Trent do all these different videos. So if we have a client who gives their phone to a kid or something, I just want it to be family friendly. Yeah. yeah. Well, my ask kids, Eric my to kids asked. And what did he bleep it out with? Something like very bizarre. It was a, it was a quack. Like, oh. <laughs> I I love like, that. <laughs> That's so good. My I, kids called, go, I called Nick one day and Gus yeah. heard me swear on the phone. And he, oh yeah. I'm pretty sure he no longer likes me. <laughs> Well, it was oh. on speakerphone in the car and, and he goes, when you hung up, my kid Gus, Gus goes, daddy, he said a bad word. Mm. I was oh like, man, oh, no, I feel like good. I am. I but my kids asked me, how many first, my kids asked me how many followers I have. They're like, you have a bill, you have a billion daddy. I'm like, yes, but not more than Jesse. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jesse man, has continue. more followers than it your continue. dad. Okay, I have so, a question. Yeah. I have a quick question. It seems like, all right, just around liking production in general, like it seems like it gives y'all energy and it fills your bucket. Does it do that for both of y'all or is it opposite for one of y'all? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I would say it definitely fills my bucket in a different way. I'm more um, like I use Instagram heavily. I think Instagram is kind of turning into like the millennial mom platform. Mm -hmm. And so when I post my stories and photos, like I'm looking for instant connection and conversation where YouTube is more of a long-term game. And so, um, I love our content days because it's time I get to spend with Trent and we make fun things and we get to visit some of our favorite places in the twin cities. Um, but I love Instagram because I get to connect with people that I may not just talk to every day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I want to pivot yeah. a little bit because Carissa, like you said, Trent, she's really good at connecting with people. And I get like, I find myself getting immersed in her stories where she's literally like having a conversation and you feel like she's talking to you. Like she's like sitting in the line at Starbucks <laughs> and she'll say, hi, I'm in line at Starbucks. This line is super long. And I just wanted to fill you guys in. Our kids are doing this and yada, 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 yada. And let me tell you about what's going on in the market. And then she'll get into the real estate market and she just like talks, but it's like, I understand it. And it's so relatable and down to earth. It's, I don't know. And it's like, it's like 10 or 12 stories long. It is. But they're I, long. I, <laughs> but I want to listen to the whole thing because she never yeah. says um or ah. She knows exactly what's coming out of her mouth. And that to me is just incredible, an incredible talent, you know? 
Yeah, she's so, really skilled in that way. She, I think it's because she slows down and she's just so thought. You're, you're just so thought out. I, I think so fast mm -hmm. that when I talk, it's like a blur. <laughs> if you knew what was going on in my head, though, you would be shocked at my delivery because I'm thinking like five stories ahead of the current story I'm, I'm yeah. in. One of the best leaders that I was under at one point in my life um, had always told me to count 10 seconds and pause. And so I have trained myself to hopefully deliver in that manner. But what I found on Instagram and um, a lot of our competition in our markets and young professionals is they spend so much time making this, what I believe a false reality and representation of who they really are, who their family is or what their business is. And it's not relatable for people. People don't feel comfortable opening up and just engaging in conversation because they see this image of this, you know, faux leather pant legging and <laughs> obnoxious <laughs> lipstick and all of these yeah. things. And they're like, that's not real life. Like I have no makeup on. I have breast milk on my shirt. I have <laughs> skin up on my, you know? And so for me, I'm trying to take a, an approach of like, Hey, this is me. This is my family. Here's our authentic self. I'm not popping on Instagram and getting all glamored up every single day. Like this is my real life. This is me. Like I don't love, love to it. wear makeup all the time. So I'm not going to just go inside the house and get all dolled up to come on Instagram for it and to tell a story. Um, yeah. so I, what I have found is like some days I'll have you guys like 65 private messages from just some random story I, I posted. And it's fun because then I get to engage with people and just chat about whatever. It's all about authenticity, I think. Yeah. yeah. And then this about the real estate market, I, I try to incorporate just updates about what we're seeing in real in the real estate world. I think in general, the population loves to hear about real estate. And what I found is when you're on stories talking about it and you're not in the limelight creating an edited video, they feel like they can trust you because you know the you know what you're talking about. You're talking about the data. You're talking about things. It's live. It's unedited. And yeah, so I'm I think not it's trying great. to hide anything, That's right? Great. Well, like, you know who your you know who your demographic is for sure. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah, I bet you you sell a lot of houses to people who are kind of you know similar to you and that yep. you know they're your age. They're buying their first home. Uh, I mean, you guys have bought and sold more than one, but you know they probably have kids or are gonna have kids and they're like hey you know they see you they see trent eating a you know a juicy lucy and they're like oh that place looks <laughs> awesome and i love hamburgers and they see you like you know talking about what your kids are doing and then talking about the market and you and by the way you do it like multiple times a day like it's not just once in a while you know there's always something to talk like most people you know get all flustered when they try to come up with content and make it relatable but also Completely. concise and understandable you know i think it's pretty awesome that you can do that um i and have it's a question watch. yeah go ahead yeah so by the way you guys are adorable and an inspiration to all couples out there i just want to give you guys some props for number one being so awesome to be to be on this podcast today but just your energy and the way that you guys work together is so awesome. I think it's very rare to find that. So props to you guys. A couple questions about that though. <laughs> and I think oh, some that's people, good. I think some people <laughs> want to hear this. Um, I've just been listening to your story to, you know, today and just taking a lot of great um, notes in my head about how you guys work together. One thing that comes up for me is that you guys leverage each other's strengths and weaknesses. Is that something that you guys kind of sat down and said, okay, you're good at this and I'm good at that. So let's part, let's do this. And, um, you know, teamwork makes a dream work. Or was it kind of like a fumble through like struggle? Tell us a little bit about the, the learning opportunities within that, just because I think it's good for our listeners to hear that it's not all like, you know, bells and whistles and rainbows and whatever you want to call it. Does that yeah, make there, sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For, thank you for the nice compliments. Um, it was, uh, there's a little bit of both of those things. We, there was a lot of learning and a lot of things where we were kind of like, okay, you're going to be really good at this. But <clears throat> when Carissa joined me in business in spring of 2018, the original plan was for her to sell because she was a salesperson and she's really good at that. And uh, then we kind of quickly realized that having me sell and her sell while we had a newborn was that made no sense. Why would we, why would we do that to ourselves? So <laughs> Completely really. Then the plan, the <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> then the plan was once she kind of saw my behind the scenes and how much of a disaster it was, because it was, I was a mess. I was a one man show doing 40 to 50 was kind of my cap, 40 to 50 units a year by myself with no admin or anything like that. And to some people that's a lot. And to some, it's not a lot. To me, that was my cap. For one she, person, for one person, it's a lot. Yeah. 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 And uh, she was just like, how do you, I mean, there was a lot of swear words. How in the heck are you doing <laughs> this? Like, this is a disaster. And so we were like, oh, okay, you need to take that side of the business and run with it. And I'm not going to lie for the first, probably spring through all the way up until mega camp. I wasn't really sure if she was going to even stay in the business with me because I just didn't see, I thought she was going to jump in and just love it. And I didn't really yeah. see that. And then it was funny. We went to mega camp and we had a maps coach at the time, but it was under her name, not my name. So she got to go to the mastery breakouts and I did not. And <laughs> when we were in the hotel room, I'm like, well, shoot, I'm like, are you even like, do you even want to go to the mastery things? Like, should I just take your name tag and go to some rainmaker stuff? And, and, and then we we're kind of like, you know what, just go, go to the operations thing and see if you like it. She came back from that with a notebook full of notes. Like I could see it in her eyes that she found what she wanted to do. And she sat next to some really big hitters operations at the table. And she like, I could just see this excitement in her that I had never seen before. And that trip to Austin was when she fell in love with the business, I think. And that's awesome. And she's got just yeah. taken the operations thing and run with it. And so that's, we run, we run really efficiently. And that's why we can mm -hmm. do so much with just her and I. And I think, um, so I, we're kind of pivoting. Uh, we have a maps coach right now that is helping us through this stage in our business, but we're pivoting away from me being in operations as an operations director and hiring um, my position out. And then Trent and I kind of coexisting as like CEOs of the business, because what we have found is now that we have this foundation and these systems that are proven to work, we are better off lead generating. There are very few people that can shake a tree and money falls from it. And yeah. we are just, we love doing that. We love connecting and getting out with people. But if I'm stuck in the operations role, that's a, that's a day-to-day -day thing that I need to be focused on. And I can't be doing that and other things. Um, and the industry that I was in prior to real estate was consumer goods. And I was solution-based selling. All you're doing is asking these buyers questions, figuring out these stores issues, figuring out what target needs, what target doesn't need, um, figuring out when uh, planograms are going to miss. And maybe there's a drop-in opportunity that you can do drop ship. Um, it was a solution-based selling situation. And so when I jumped into real estate, I viewed his business as, okay, we just need to come up with solutions to all of mm -hmm. these things. And we are providing a service for people. We're not selling them. We're just right. providing them a really good experience and trying to come up with solutions to any of their problems. Um, so that to me, I looked at that as a challenge and shout out to Brinley Tucker, who manages a lot of the operations world within our KW ecosystem the mastery event that I went to, she was leading it. And it was just so powerful because I felt like there was so much opportunity to build out a foundation within Zold. And so that takes a long time and Trent doesn't have the patience for it. He is just looking at the next thing, which is great. Um, so I really took, I would say the last three years and have focused on just that. Um, and now I feel very confident in what we have created. Um, and we have had really good feedback from our clients. And now I feel like I can step away from that and move on to something else within. So, so Zold is looking for a director of ops. <laughs> so yeah, if you know anyone, are you interested? <laughs> hey, I, think I think that that's, that's great a great right story. Now. Yeah, I love a great that story. story. So, but thank you for it's being It's hard as a couple. It is, yeah. it's challenging, but you have to look mm -hmm. at your relationship um, separately from your professional relationship. And when I jumped in, I really took us in my head, did a SWOT analysis on Trent mm -hmm. and sold and figured out where the opportunities are and what threats there are, and then created solutions around all of that. Cause Amazing. I knew what he was good at. I know him better than anyone. Um, mm -hmm. and I knew that he could excel and just focus on his strengths. Um, and then we focused on all the other things and just created solutions to that. So, oh my gosh, I, love I would it. say reevaluating your SWOT, um, yep. doing a SWOT analysis on your business and reevaluating that quarterly, especially when you're new and you're trying to grow is really, really important. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've never interviewed an agent or a team 
who has ever mentioned doing a SWOT analysis. Like everybody, I've never met, I've never, no one's ever even said that they do that. You know what I, I mean? And, and creating an avatar. So and SWAT. going to our yeah. social media conversation, um, we have done a SWOT analysis on our business or may, maybe I have and kind of asked him questions. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't have the patience to sit down with me in a flip chart and go over all that. Like he's yeah. like <laughs> wanting to talk to people, but then creating your avatar, like who is your avatar? And for us, it's basically us is our ideal client. People that are too busy with their families, too busy with their professional careers and need someone who they know, like, and can trust with one of their largest assets. Um, and so creating that avatar and some people that I know, um, and we still need to do this is putting it up in your office, like, a, a avatar and then a description of that person. So anything that you post and anything that you do in your business, you're asking yourself would that avatar would Sally Nelson, would she click this? Would she like this post? Would she like this content day? And so when we're dumping in all of our ideas in our Slack channel, um, we kind of vet the ideas by the avatar. I so, think that, oh, cool. I think that it's so that. important. Everybody, lots of agents think they need to work with everyone. Yeah. And that's yeah. why most agents are so miserable because they think they need to work with everyone. If you get really purposeful about your business and you decide, okay, these are the people I want to work with. You're going to be happy every day. Yeah. Totally. You know, what's funny is there's, there's people who are going to listen to this and probably cringe, but I have, I have buyers in my pipeline that I know are just energy sucks. And I have zero intention on following up with them. And I know that they'll probably buy a house in the next 12 months. Yeah. Well, I think that's great. I think, that's but I, big, I just don't have the energy way. there. Uh, a couple of things we should just mention before we get off of this SWOT analysis. You said no one does them. No, I didn't Maybe say no should... one does them. I just said that I've never had anyone bring it up. So, yeah. you know, it's so the importance of them, right? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Yeah. But then I think the other thing Carissa brought to our organization probably a couple months ago was the avatar thing. And Nick, it was funny when you were describing the type of person that connects with us on Instagram, you almost to a T described our avatar, the person who we're targeting. And so that's funny that what we see as our target client, you also can name as our target client and you're not part of our organization. Mm -hmm. That tells us that I think we're on the right track. And, And in the real estate world, I'd just like to point out, I don't follow SWAT. I actually start with my threats. Then I do my, our strengths. Then I do our weaknesses and then I end with opportunities. It's a mindset mm-hmm. thing um, because awesome. as real estate professionals, we all likely could just rattle off all the different threats that we're experiencing during mm. COVID. It was like worldwide yes. pandemic. Like yeah. mm-hmm. that's a threat yeah. to our business. Like, and so that's the process that I follow when I'm conducting these slots and then ending with opportunities just makes you feel really good about mm-hmm. your business and all that you can accomplish from it. I love That's it. Awesome. I love how simple it is. And you know, like, like, yeah, like yeah. threat is like, I, I don't know. So I would just, like oh. to, I would like to, sorry, Leslie, did you say, want to say something? I was just going to say it's, it's working backwards. It's saying, what are we trying to solve? What is the, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? And then working backwards from there. And I exactly. love that you go through all of those things uh, strategically strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. Yeah. I, I would like to just talk a little bit before we wrap up. I would like to talk a little bit about your command usage, your KW command usage. Mm-hmm. You're all in on KW command. You did 32 million last year using KW command and approximately 80 units using KW command. I don't know where I would start with this question. Like, I guess let's talk operationally first. Like, how do you, what's your strategy? Like you're using op- opportunities, obviously, which is your pipeline. And you have tasks probably out the you know what, because that's the type of person that you are, which is great. So I don't know, explain a little bit to us about what your command usage looks like. I'll go first because most okay. of it is going to be Carissa. So I, yeah. I'm actually in there. I'm actually in there very little, but, but the like, let me get this out of the way first for like a, yeah. for like 30 there, seconds. There's a, there's a piece in there that's very, very important to people who are out selling but I will tell you, your operations team should be the one spending most of their day in there. And my the, the tool that is a game changer for me is the opportunity pipeline. Yay. Um, I it. use that thing like crazy. If somebody even makes a comment about buying or selling, they go into that opportunity mm-hmm. pipeline in one of the stages. 
And if I ever have a moment where I can sit down on my computer, I'm going right to that pipeline to see who I can contact that hasn't been contacted in a while. And so the opportunity pipeline has been huge for me. Aside from that, I don't spend a whole lot of time in there. I'll put some reminders in there maybe in tasks just so I don't forget. Um, we do do some lead generation on like through campaigns and stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and we send out some mailers from time to time that have been really successful. But other than that, I don't spend a whole lot of time in there anymore. Carissa is the one who's using the checklist and stuff. So Carissa, you can speak. So I've taught a lot of classes within our market center and just have had masterminds with other operational teams of some mega, te mega agent teams locally. And I think, um, the biggest issue with a mega team in command is they're thinking too hard. Mm -hmm. oh Anytime I, I sit I with someone, say, they're just you. like, they're thinking way too hard about it. I'm like, just yes. forget every limiting belief that's in your head or what your perception is of command. And let me just show you this simple thing. Um, I love command and all it has to offer. Uh, we have been using command since basically the day you could only enter a name and an email. Like, and, and an address. And then we got to birthdays and I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> and then we got to like sync it to our social media platforms. And so we have been with command since the very uh, infancy stages. And so to see it develop and grow has been amazing. Yeah. Um, and to see what it's done for our business. I love smart plans personally, uh, within our opportunities, I have a checklist of things that need to be comp accomplished from a transactional standpoint or a pre-list standpoint. And I had mentioned earlier in the podcast that we have a buyer and a seller landing pages with embedded videos that explain every step of the process. What can you expect during your inspection? What's an appraisal? Um, how to prep for your move? How to prep for closing day? A realtor's advice on, a move, on your move? Like all sorts of videos that Trent and I have created. These are unedited videos. This is literally Trent and I sitting in front of a ring light in our living room. It's authentic. It's just him and I. Um, and I feel like people like that. So it's not going to cost you a ton of money to do this. But within opportunities right now, I'm working on creating a smart plan for every step of the process. So right now we have a post-close smart plan that I tag the contact with post-close after they close. And then it follows a step or a smart plan after the client Like closes. what's some of the steps in that smart plan? Um, it sends an email first. Yeah, so I think uh, like the day after closing, it'll send them an email that just says, thank you so much. There's 18,000 agents in our area and you chose us. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, let us know if you need anything in the next few days. Then it sends another one like a oh, week and later. And it asks for a review. Yep. Yeah. So it's at like a week later. It, I, I purposely made it not ask the first time. So yeah. the second mm -hmm. message that goes out is about a week after closing. I think it is seven days. Mm -hmm. And it asks for, it says one small favor. How's everything going? Did you guys get moved in and settled? Uh, if you could do me a favor, here's a link to Google. Here's a link to Facebook. And both go right to where you have to review so they don't have to click again. Uh, and then... It just says, thank you again. And then like two weeks later, that same sort of email, it's not identical. It just says, hey, by this time you might have found a leak or maybe you need something in the wall patch because you hit it when you were moving. Um, let us know if you need a contact, we can send somebody over. And if you haven't left us a review yet, please do so, We our business depends on it. And it asks again. And that's pretty much the post-close process. Yeah. Okay, so now- I love that. Yeah. So what I found was people, that, that smart plan. plan. I love that. Smart yeah. Plan. You guys well, have to, you guys, uh, Leslie was going to say you have to publish that smart plan. You have to publish that smart plan now because there's going to be so many agents that are going to be okay. Writing down the steps, but guess what? You can just, I think it, yeah, I think, I think it, it is. is I think it is. If okay. you just okay. type in Zold, I think it's Zold post close. Yeah. That's okay. awesome. Uh, and I love it. I love <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. So, so basically I took that and I'm like, okay, the tra transaction, like transaction to close. There are so many different emails that I have in a Google drive of yeah. formatted emails that I send out to the client. How can I automate that and be like the post close? But now your smart plans can be 365 days long. Yes, exactly. So you can now then add, you can add an email or a text like every couple months just to that smart plan. So that was my problem is transaction to close. I couldn't really create any smart plan because there, nothing was longer than, you know, 90 days. days and I needed it to be 60, 30 days long. So now with all the videos that we created in our landing page and all the emails that I already have 
pre-drafted for contract to close, I'm basically trying to automate that role and tag people with inspection, um, appraisal, uh, post appraisal or whatever. And it sends them an email that I've already have pre-drafted and a link to the video explaining that step. Now, the only email I can't really put into a smart plan is like our welcome email when they get under contract for right. their home sales, because that has certain dates that I have to fill in. Right. Um, but the goal is to automate all of that so that whoever is running that process, it's so simple. And then the client yeah. gets multiple touches. It's like having, Amazing. you know, remember here's, you know, to look at what an appraisal it actually is. Um, and it hopefully eliminates it. a lot of client questions that we have. Yeah. Well, we could talk about this all day. I yes. know all day. This you guys podcast are awesome. has, yeah, this podcast has morphed <laughs> so many different it ways has. from <laughs> like, social media to relationship advice to how we're using command. Maybe we'll talk this a little bit more about relationship. I mean, I've worked with my mother and I've worked with my wife. It was much more pleasant working with my wife. I love working with my, working with my mother was a whole, I mean, whole but, other story. But have but, you played nude basketball? I no, have there. not played nude basketball. <laughs> oh, that's right. And we'll save that for another podcast. That's command your nude basketball. <laughs> Commando. Oh. Command your three po- <laughs> command your three pointer. That's almost like the t-shirt that Trent came up with several years ago that both of our wives shot down, where we're like, let's wear it to family reunion. He's like, dude, Nick, how great with a t-shirt that says go commando look oh my gosh and I'm we thought you, i'm gonna do it you shouldn't have said it now everybody's gonna do it i'm gonna do them and we're gonna bring them to mega camp i think we could do it now <laughs> you think so yeah yeah i think we could do it now you want to go in on it i don't know i'm still kind leslie of, would you like to invest sure uh, perhaps, <laughs> kind <yeah>. of unsure <laughs> let's see let's see let's see but anyway listen guys this has been a lot of fun appreciate both of you yeah, for being on you. here i could talk about this all day i think that it's uh, really impressive that you guys have have such a great business with just the two of you using KW technology, doing this, doing the YouTube, doing the 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 uh, stories. And I think like what people have to realize is like, you know, these things don't have to take that much time. Like you guys have your content days, so you schedule out when you're gonna do that, right? It's not like oh my god, you're not rushing around. You know when those days are. Carissa does her off the cuff stories, but you make the time for it. And once you get your system set up in command, which really doesn't take that long, it's just kind of works on, it does its own thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yep. well, thanks. If people want to contact you. If people want to contact us, uh, Facebook, Instagram are very easy to do. Trent and Carissa Zimmer. Yeah. Zimmer, Z I M M E R. Our brand is Zold, which is the Zold. word sold with a Z at the front instead. So, yeah. So our Instagram so, handle is Zold Real Estate for our business. And then um, I'm Zold by the Zimmers and he's Zold by Zimmer. Oh, okay. That makes things much <laughs> I chose brilliant. to include him. He didn't choose to include me. <laughs> right. He's just on his own. You're both of you. I see yeah. how things are. <laughs> Well, if you like this podcast, please subscribe, follow, share, review. That's how we move up in the rankings. And that's how we know that the love is out there. We're the little podcast that could. So we thank you guys for listening and we will see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. you. See you guys. Thank you.